This is Austin. He's my roommate, videographer, and an aspiring athlete. And this is the story of how he went from an ordinary, unmotivated couch potato to a jiu-jitsu champion. If you've seen my other videos, you probably know that Austin and I started jiu-jitsu a little over a year ago. But what you don't know is that this whole grappling journey started as a completely different challenge. 30 days of wrestling. 30 days of me kicking Austin's ass. <laughs> <laughs> me being a former wrestler was eager to get back into grappling and Austin, being a semi-professional gamer, desperately needed to get in shape. So I challenged him to wrestle for 30 days in a row at our local park, and he accepted. In order to measure his progress, we decided to compare how long it would take me to take him down on day one versus day 30. Timer starts when we touch hands. With takedown time as one measurement, Austin also had a couple of personal goals in mind. I want neck muscles. I also want to lose weight. Not like I look awful, but I'm not like, doesn't look like there's any definition of my gelatin. Gotta carve out some of this cake. But my main goal for Austin was completely different. I wanted him to reap the benefits of wrestling that can't be measured, primarily mental toughness. There's a reason that wrestling has more UFC champions than any other fighting style. These guys are at the top because wrestling training is so grueling and so physically and mentally demanding that the guys who are able to get through it are amongst the mentally toughest people on earth. This mindset was all I wanted Austin to achieve during this challenge. And during our time at the park, it became clear that it was something he severely lacked. Every takedown, <laughs> 20 jump squats. No. We're gonna keep wrestling with this? Yeah. How many, well, for how long? Until we're done. During the first few days of wrestling, it was clear Austin had a long way to go, both physically and mentally. He gets so tired that he couldn't complete this session. Wait, vomit. Had a Lunchables, a Brownie Cliff Bar, and a Snickers on the way home. What kind of Lunchables? This is turkey cheese. What's the grossest one? It's not ham. Plus, this was my first time ever teaching wrestling, and with Austin as the only person to demonstrate on, he wasn't exactly getting the best instruction. All of this resulted in slow progress and me not getting my grappling fix. Not only that, but just a few days into the challenge, it was clear that Austin was also lacking motivation. And the challenge to wrestle for 30 days in a row quickly turned into wrestling as often as I could convince him until we've wrestled 30 times. I ask him to wrestle every day and like one in five days he says yes. That's not true. Not true at all. You haven't asked me once this last week. Except for today, we're here. Hey, yesterday. Was, what happened yesterday? Yesterday you were like, we'll do it when I get off work, but you got off work and then I was tired. But I held him accountable as best I could and with time, Austin started to show signs of improvement. Oh, you almost got it. Instead of collapsing from exhaustion and being completely helpless, he began giving me some real wrestling responses. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. And I even started to see a glimmer of self-belief. I'm like, oh, that one time I was about to get tossed upside down like a salt shaker, I didn't. That feels like a win. It feels like enjoyable to wrestle now instead of just like waterboarding. <laughs> but it wasn't until day 18, our first day grappling somewhere other than the park, that Austin's progress would begin to skyrocket. I've been planning on starting jujitsu for years and finally decided to walk into my local gym and see what it was all about. And 10 days later, Austin joined me for his first ever jujitsu class. We had officially graduated from wrestling amongst acorns and rocks and were now on actual mats with actual instructors and training partners other than just ourselves. It was here at Austin's first jiu-jitsu class that our 30 days of wrestling challenge would begin to slowly wither away and turn into a much more meaningful and impactful grappling journey. It's demoralizing when someone can take you down and control you on the ground at will. But the first time you experience an unsuspecting middle-aged man effortlessly manipulate your joints and cut off blood flow to your brain, one of two things will happen. You either suppress the memory, let your membership expire, and try to forget that jujitsu exists, or it's a revelation. And for Austin, it was the latter. Yes, yes, yes! As long as I've known Austin, he's talked about wanting to get in shape. And while living together for the past three years, I've tried to hold him accountable and do my best to show him that working out can be fun. And when Austin started jujitsu, 
my influence was no longer needed. He was in the gym five days a week. And while at first it was still difficult for him to roll for a full six minute round, it only took a handful of classes before Austin was staying for two, sometimes three classes in a row. And not only was his conditioning improving, but he was also getting pretty damn good at jujitsu. Our original 30 day goals were still in place, but since the wrestling challenge died, we'll check in on those at the end of the transformation. But with the one year anniversary of us starting the wrestling challenge just a few months away, Austin set one final goal for himself. Win a jujitsu competition. A couple months in and trainings become a part of Austin's daily routine, but preparing for a competition requires more than just good attendance. So Austin and I started putting in some extra work. When the competition was just a few weeks out, our gym actually moved locations. So we were able to fill our living room with the old mats so we could train at home. We were also going to open mat on the weekends to get extra reps and we started going back to the park to practice wrestling and do a little bit of extra conditioning. Austin was ready, at least as ready as he could possibly be. How do you feel? Like, I feel really good. I feel like I'm in quite possibly the best shape of my life. <laughs> <laughs> to be totally honest, my expectations were low. Austin was getting good quickly, but he'd only been training for three or four months. I thought back to our first days at the park when I knew he was physically able to keep going, but he'd surrender to exhaustion. That's not exactly a winning mentality. And although he'd come so far, I didn't know if his mental toughness had come far enough. But one thing was for sure, we were about to find out. The adrenaline dump during your first competition is pretty indescribable, but as Austin puts it, It was like a, like a flashbang went off. Like I felt like my ears were ringing, my like face was hot. I don't remember anything. I remember waking up in closed guard and I like look around because I don't know where I am. Where'd you wake up? Like right there. I'm like looking, cause I, I didn't know what orientation my body, there. I didn't know what orientation my body was in. With his heart racing from adrenaline, which only makes you even more tired, Austin ended up in some pretty bad positions, but he was ultimately able to pass his opponent's guard and come out on top in his first match. In his semifinal match, his opponent hits a single leg on him here, straight out of the gate. And when that happened, I was a little worried that Austin might be outmatched here, but he was able to grab a low single and come on top for the sweep. And two seconds later, he got swept. This entire tournament was a roller coaster of emotions, but with 20 seconds left, down by two points, Austin's able to pass the guard to take a one point lead, then transitions to mount to put himself up five points to secure another victory. And just like that, Austin's in the finals. A competition like this is a test of mental fortitude. And in order to win, you need to be able to push yourself to a breaking point and then keep pushing and then repeat over and over. And the same guy who couldn't wrestle for 30 seconds just a few months ago was up on points and was just seconds away from winning a gold medal in a jujitsu competition. And all he has to do is what wrestlers do best stay on top. These are like all movements I'm not used to. Yeah, hold on. I don't want to do this. I really hurt my back. Yeah, there's the fight. There's the fight, Austin. <laughs> no. No. Have you lost weight? <laughs> no, I've gained a ton of weight. Ugh. That was like excruciating and really painful, but not as bad as a minute of that was seven months ago. By the time I'm in the tournament, it'll have been four months since I like went to my first class. You know what's funny? It's almost been a year since we started this wrestling video. Where? 30 days of wrestling. <laughs> not wrong, I didn't say in a row. That was supposed to be the idea. <laughs> I don't need to know that. Now they know. It certainly wasn't the prettiest jujitsu, but he did it. Yeah, he got first place, but that's not really what I mean. To me, the result was just a testament to how far he'd come. And it was proof that he'd officially achieved the level of mental toughness and self-belief that I was hoping he would achieve for himself all along. But there was still one thing left to do. A year ago, it took me two seconds to take Austin down. And now it's finally time to see how much longer it will take after one year of grappling.
Unsurprisingly, Austin was able to fend me off for longer than he did on day one. But what about his original goals to grow his neck and lose weight? Well, it's taken me so long to edit this video. It's now been two years since our first day of wrestling at the park. And I forgot to measure his neck and make him step on a scale at the one year mark. Bruh. But let me catch you up to date. Austin continued to wreak havoc on the white belt circuit, winning two more gold medals and a bronze. He also got cauliflower ear a few months back, which makes him officially a wrestler. And fast forward to a couple weeks ago, Austin is a blue belt, and I've come a pretty long way too. The private wrestling lessons I was giving to Austin in the park has turned into a nogi wrestling class that I teach at our gym every Tuesday. Even this video has transformed from a cute little 30 days wrestling challenge to a complete lifestyle change. I mean, when we first started filming this video, I didn't even have a niche audience on YouTube. And now that we're caught up to current day, let's see if Austin accomplished those goals that he set for himself so long ago. So, come here, please. I have competed as low as 171. I'll measure your neck now, then I'll tell you what it was two oh, years dude. ago. Oh, okay. Okay, your neck's a little over 16 inches. What do you think it was? 16. Two years ago. 16? It was 15. It was 15? Your neck's kind of inch. Oh, day. what? I'm so biased toward it now, but I think everyone should start grappling. It's been maybe the most impactful thing in my life. Those are strong words. I, dude, I don't know anything that's ever done this much good for me, like mentally or physically. I haven't gone to therapy yet though, so I don't know how long that'll last. 